Hello guys, I hope you are doing well. So in this lecture, we'll talk about the gradual wave flow. This is a very important topic in the hydraulics. And before going into the next slides, I'll briefly uh, discuss that what we are going to learn in this lecture. So we'll talk about that what gradual varied flow is, uh, why it is important, and uh, why we are uh, learning, we are studying this topic. And then we will talk about some uh, characteristics of this flow, and we'll drive a wonderful relation. Uh, we'll drive an equation for the gradual varied flow, uh, and la finally we'll talk about. Uh, the waters, different water surface profiles which just happened due to the gradual varied flow. So what gradual varied flow is that when the rate of variation of depth with respect to the distance is small, it is gradually varied flow and when the rate of variation is large, then it is rapidly varied flow. Uh, so that means if in a channel, for example, uh, you have uh, uh, you're considering a canal, uh, you're considering a flow in a canal or in a river, uh, due to any reason, for example, if uh, due to due to the uh, the obstruction of a sheet pile or due to the obstruction of a of a of a of a barrage or due to obstruction of a dam or in a canal you can say there is a fall in a canal the flow depth is uh, slowly varying or gradually varying then the flow will be gradual gradually varied flow and then uh, if it is abruptly changes it happens in most of the uh, channels you can observe uh, practically when you visit some kind of fall or uh, when you visit some kind of obstruction in front of uh, any 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 stream any stream flow you can see that there is a gradually varied flow so this flow has a lot of a uh, lot of examples in our uh, common hydraulic structures and we will see in our next slides that where these flows are occurring so one thing is for sure that when there is gradual varied flow the flow depth is varying so that means that the flow when there is gradually varied flow then the flow will not be uniform it is for sure because the flow depth is varying so it is a non uniform flow so in an open channel we have a two kinds of flow steady unsteady and in steady we have a uniform and then non-uniform so we are discussing this because of a most of the example most of the situations we have a steady flow and we have a most uh, uh, the equations like uh, Bernoulli's and uh, and Manning's and other equations they have assumptions that the flow will be steady so now we have the non-uniform flow and non-uniform we are going to discuss in brief the gradual and the rapid varied flow so this is an example if we have a reservoir then a ca irrigation canal so you can see that the flow depth will be changing at that point a sharp or abrupt change in the flow depth then this flow is a, a rapidly varied flow and then after some time you can see that this height is changing uh, so, uh, gradually changing its depth and at that point it again changes into the at that point the height is remained constant throughout this length so this is a uniform flow an example so this uh, figure is a better uh, to just understand of a rapidly gradually and uniform flow so such kinds of uh, flows happen if you just uh, provide a sluice gate in barrages you just provide a sluice gate so this is upstream and this one is the downstream so the gradual is so uniform flow because um, at the down at the upstream side the flow is coming with a uniform uh, a uniform height uh, flow depth and uh, due to this obstruction it has its effect at a certain length and at that length uh, it is varying its uh, head from that length the the flow depth is starts increasing and it's gradually decreasing to this so this is a perfect example of a gradually varied flow 
and uh, in this, this is a fall for example it's a fall in a canal so at that point you can see that at that length this is a gradual wave flow and then it sees the flow depth is rapidly changes this is example of a rapidly varied flow so we have a lot of examples in our hydraulic structures where such kind of flows are uh, developed <coughs> So these are the common uh, the, the general assumptions for the gradual varied flow. The channel is prismatic and the flow is steady. So the for the channel is prismatic mean a, a prismatic channel is the channel who has uh, whose cross section is not uh, not varying. So a channel whose cross section remains constant and whose bed slope remains constant is known as a prismatic channel. And the flow steady means that with respect to time, uh, the, the the different factors like velocity, the flow depth, and the discharge remains constant. And the bed slope, and the second assumption is the bed slope S naught. We are denoting with S naught. The bed slope is relatively small for the gradually. So, if the bed slope is relatively small, then you can see that we have a gradually uh, uh, change of the flow depth. The velocity distribution in the vertical section is uniform throughout the length and the kinetic energy correction factor is close to unity. The streamlines and the are the streamlines are parallel and the pressure distribution is hydrostatic. Uh, why uh, we are we are assuming that the pressure distribution is hydrostatic because the flow depth is we are saying that changes very gradually so we are just considering it uh, as a over overall when we are driving uh, when we are driving a relation we just consider it as a uh, hydrostatically uh, all the all uh, throughout the length the channel roughness is constant along its length and does not depend on the depth of the flow so these are the general assumptions for the gradual varied flow and these are the characteristics so if the flow is developed uh, you can say that the, this flow is a gradual varied flow then it must have the following characteristics uh, the the flow the water depth and the velocity changes gradually when this is happening and uh, when there is gradual varied flow the water uh, the depth and the velocity are changes gradually for sure the flow is non uniform because these are changes uh, the water depth and the velocity changes Water surface changes smoothly and continuously if friction loss along the channel is not done. So these are the tasks, you can just check it. Uh, after the lecture, you will better understand. Uh, the analysis method. So for driving a relation for the gradually varied flow. So for the gradually varied flow, we are mm, more interested to drive a relation. Uh, for example, if uh, from from this length to this length, the 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 the, velocity, the water depth is varying. So I'm more interesting that how much water depth is varying from uh, either 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 the water depth uh, changes positively means it's the water depth is increasing, or if negatively means there's a fall and the water depth is decreasing. So how much water uh, depth will be increased from this point to this point and and uh, for the how much length so if we have a desired specified length we can calculate either way so both of the d uh, dh and dy so along the horizontal distance along the horizontal distance along the stream flow uh, we'll just find out the how the flow depth will be varying so the concept analysis method will apply the concept of the Bernoulli's equation which has its own assumptions the flow is steady is one of the important and the continuity equation will say that the, the both cross section um, throughout the section the discharge remain constant and the velocity might be changes and the area might be changes so throughout the cross and this is an example uh, from here we just start our derivation and this is a very important figure this is a very important figure i'll just start for, uh, for the energy grade line you have already studied this uh, figure and you have a good you must have a very good concept of this if you don't have then i'll again repeat it that this is our datum line for example this uh, this is a canal it's or a river this, it, it, uh, this is its bed of the canal and it is at one city for example it's a city a then it reaches to a city b or you can say it just falls into the sea uh, uh, or in a river so that uh, level where it falls where it ends that depth is the 
datum line that is the reference line okay so this is the reference line so this we call from that point to that this is the uh, uh, the potential head or the datum head they be called denoted as a z and from the bed of the uh, from bed of the canal or a river or whatever you assume and this from this level to the water surface we call it as a water depth y1 and if the water is flowing then it must have a kinetic energy uh, the velocity head so the velocity head is from this point to we are assuming that this is an imaginary line we just assume that it has a head of this much uh, why we are assuming that if at this section we just stop this water so this water will automatically reach a head of that much because the water is flowing so this energy this much energy is using for utilizing for its flow so this has energy of uh, water is flowing so this has an energy of v square into tg you just calculate its velocity put it here and calculate it you have a number in the figure and that much energy in terms of head it has so overall you can see that where we are uh, where the depth of the flow is visible we call it the hydraulic grade line and the imaginary line we call it the total energy line or energy grade line um, here uh, another important thing is that uh, this uh, the, the the bed or this the bottom surface of this canal is making uh, an angle with that datum line or with the horizontal line so i can uh, uh, i'm switching to this figure uh, at this uh, this angle i can write it here that s naught is the slope of this canal bed and this slope is i can say that it is dz into dx for uh, that means that along the horizontal distance along the flow along the flow along the as the distance uh, as the x in the x direction as the distance increases there is a change in that slope either in the positive or in the negative way so similarly this energy line is also making an angle and this slope i can call it as a energy slope is equal to the the de into dx so as the distance increases there is change in the energy so you just remember it we will use it in the in, the, in our uh, later uh, stage according to the bernoulli's you know that h is equal to the uh, uh, the, the potential head that is the pressure head and that is the velocity head so the summation of all these uh, heads will give the total head at this point so as it proceeds these will also uh, changes so we will just uh, take that how this uh, head varies uh, if the horizontal distance is increasing so if we just take a derivative with respect to the horizontal distance that how the head varies as the x direction as the distance increases how this head will be uh, varied so you, we can write this equation as dh into dx uh, in this form and here you can see that dh over dx so the change in the head with respect to the horizontal distance is equal to the minus s that is slope is in negative sign so this negative sign means that the the slope is negative that means the slope is decreasing that means the total as the as the distance is increases the total head is decreasing it will not remain constant that means the head is decreasing so overall the energy hydraulic grade line to so the water surface the water depth is decreasing okay and uh, you can see the dz over dx is again the slope of the bed the slope of the bed is also decreasing that is why the flow is moving under the action of gravity we have provided a slope and due to which under the action of the gravity the water is flowing and this is an example of an open channel so we can say we have a negative bed slope and negative we have the energy slope so now we will start our derivation in these factors uh, we will just drive uh, uh, take the derivative of uh, this term uh, 
another uh, we have discussed this one that why it is negative and why this will be negative you, you can just uh, in other word in other words they are negative because h and z decreases in the flow direction so here is the uh, in in our previous slide you can see that uh, this is our uh, generic term from the Bernoulli's equation and we will just solve, we will take the derivative of this term, we will separately solve this term. So here this term, uh, we will just take the derivative of this term. So we know that uh, the behavior V is the uh, velocity in the channel flow. Uh, so we can from the continuity equation, we know that the Q is same throughout the channel and uh, so the a1 is um, q is equal to av so here v is equal to q over a so if we have this uh, section of that canal so you can see that b is the breadth and h is the height so we can also write area into b into h so q into b into h we can put it in play in place of v so our this equation would be equal to uh, q squared into b squared h squared into 2g so here you know that q is constant the breadth of the channel that is constant uh, you can see that 2 is constant here g is constant and the only thing which varying is the h uh, so we, uh, here we will just take the uh, derivative of uh, this term so uh, the, uh, when we take the derivative of this term so before we take the derivative we just multiplied on uh, numerator or the denominator with the dh so dh at the denominator and the numerator so by solving by taking the derivative of this term we have the minus 2 into h cube and this term we have dh into dx here it is uh, so you can see that this term q square b square into 2g is is basically uh, is equal to the v square so instead of this we can write it here v square and then when we take the uh, derivative we just uh, place here minus 2 so the 2 is cancelled with this 2 and after solving this after the taking the derivative of this term we have finally uh, this term we will just get from the derivative of this term that is minus v square into g by h uh, the dh into dx the basically the slope uh, so uh, you can see we have we got this term so uh, previously we have again we can write that uh, the generic term dh into dx all these terms and we take the derivative of this term so we put instead of dh into dx which is basically the slope of the uh, energy line so dh into dx we can write it here minus s yes, so i'll just put the previous slide here you we can also check it so I can write instead of dh into dx is minus s dx into dz into dx minus s naught which is the slope of the bed and plus uh, dh dh into dx we place it here and we take the derivative of this term and we get this term so we put that term instead of this term so we write it here so you can see that dh into dx is common here so we place the s naught in that side so s naught minus this term is equal to dh is common here and we can just uh, 1 minus v square into gh we get this term so we are interested for the gradually varied flow we are interested to find out that along the horizontal distance how the depth is varying so what the gradual what the gradual varied flow is in the gradually varied flow we just uh, in our first slide uh, we learn that the gradually that along the horizontal distance the depth is varying gradually step by step the depth is varying so this equation is very important equation which will give us which will tell us about the dh with respect to the horizontal distance by knowing all these factors s naught sr and minus fraud number so you can see v square by gh v by under root gh is basically the fraud number so when we take this square we'll get we can write it here the fraud number so general governing equation for gradually varied flow 
so here if dh by dx is positive the depth is increasing otherwise decreasing so these are the general equations so this equation is for any cross section either your cross section is rectangular trapezoidal circular whatever your cross section is we can use this generic equation for the gradually varied flow and for the wide rectangular section we can use this equation for wide rectangular section using Manning's formula we can use this equation as well so now we will discuss the water surface profiles uh, so one thing is important to know that there is not a single water surface profile for a gradually varied flow it has several water surface profiles it forms number of uh, water surface profiles uh, depending upon the scenario uh, I'll just put an example for example uh, if, if, if th there is a flow in a canal and it has a uniform flow then uh, at uh, we install a sluice gate in front of the water there is an obstruction what would happen obviously at the upstream the water surface would rise and it has a backwater effect at a certain uh, distance at the upstream so the point where where its effect would be reached from that point the water the gvf the gradually varied flow would be started and before uh, further at the upstream from that point there is a uniform flow so at the sluice gate at the upstream of the sluice gate and that at the downstream of the sluice gate there are two different water surface profiles at the upstream water surface is uh, rises but at the downstream there is small opening at the bottom of the sluice gate the water surface starts increasing so there is different kind of water surface profile so there are different scenarios when there is a fall what would happen so we will uh, learn uh, we will uh, so how these water surface profile for the gradually varied flow develop we will discuss it here uh, for example for a given channel with a known discharge Manning's coefficient and the channel bed slope uh, and the critical water depth so YC and Y0 uh, we have it here and we'll compute it so then there are three possible relation between Y0 and YC actually in, in a, uh, when there is gradually varied flow there are three different flow depths are possible so we'll discuss it here first two and then we will introduce the third one which is the uh, the changing depth uh, the non-uniform depth so for example when there is uh, uh, no uh, uh, GVF gradually varied flow then in a canal there is a uh, Y0 means a normal depth or a normal depth or you can say uniform flow depth uh, in a canal uh, we call it a Y0 and uh, obviously there is a YC there is a critical depth as well uh, from which if the flow depth is greater than this YC then that means the flow is subcritical the fraud number is greater than one and uh, <coughs> if uh, the Y naught is less than that YC and uh, that is for that scenario the slope would be when the slope would be steep obviously the YC would be greater and the, your, the normal flow in your channel would be at that height so that means the flow is super critical and there is scenario when there you can call it as a critical channel in which your YC your critical depth is equal to your normal depth so the S0 is equal to the SC and then there is scenario when S0 is equal to 0 means you have uh, and the, the slope of the channel the slope of the channel is straight so that means uh, always in an open channel the, the you have the canals we have the rivers they always flow under the action of the gravity because water flows from high altitude to the lower altitude so when there is a horizontal slope so that means s0 is equal to 0 uh, imaginary it is possible but in a real case there is no such examples we have uh, in, 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 our, in our natural structure but with the help of the pumps and the other equipments we can uh, move it uh, with the slope as well and then there is uh, another scenario adverse adverse slope means we just provide a sort of channel which in which the slope is slope of the bed is increasing 
of uh, slope of the bed is increasing and this is the case where s naught is less than 0 so these are the different scenarios which we discuss here for the mild slope number one is a channel category mild slope for the mild slope we have this will uh, denote with the mild slope with the m and we will the we have for the mild slope y naught the normal depth of the flow would be greater than the yc then that means the remarks is supercritical flow at the normal depth so these are all the scenarios you just read it from here and these are for the a for b and different scenarios it is explained very well here so uh, this is there is uh, another example for these uh, these two scenarios for the d and e uh, for example for the horizontal when the when we have zero slope uh, for uh, constant slope uh, for, uh, for a straight straight slope and uh, mm, uh, sorry uh, we have a zero slope no slope and we have adverse slope for example it is uh, at the upside the slope is increasing uh, so for the uh, to measure the discharge in a channel with the help of this is a manning's equation uh, so the horizontal channel uh, s naught is equal to zero that means this factor the slope of the channel is zero if this s naught is zero if this s naught is zero if we want to find out the discharge in it for example if s naught is zero the whole man equation would be zero so that means there is no discharge there is zero natural flow so this is zero and for the adverse slope s naught is less than zero that means negative slope adverse slope so q cannot be computed so for the horizontal and the adverse slope the uniform flow depth y naught does not exist the normal flow depth does not exist and again uh, there is another further explanation that uh, uh, for a given q if these are things that we have calculated from a channel then y naught y c and this is the y non-uniform flow depth when there is gvf then this y naught is changes into this non-uniform and or if there is uh, at the top there is yc then this yc would be changed into non-uniform flow depth the depth y is measured vertically from the channel bottom the slope of the water surface per while dy by dx is relative to the channel the prediction of the surface profile from the analysis so this would be the equation which we derived earlier and this equation would tell us what would be the uh, slope what would be the height of the water as the water moves for example there are different uh, scenarios which explain the next slide but i'll just uh, discuss it here for example if dh by dx if we put all these factors and the value of dh by dx is greater than is greater than zero then that means that d is zero means that a uh, greater than zero means that dh value is greater than tx for example if it has uh, two uh, uh, two we travel a two meter distance and we increase a height of four meter then that means the dh by dx is two so for positive uh, so for d uh, so when the dh by dx is greater than zero then we have a positive slope so the slope of the uh, so, so sorry the water surface profile will be increasing and when the dh by dx is less than zero so that means the slope we have a negative slope so we have a negative slope decreasing and when the dh by dx is equal to the s naught we have a horizontal slope and when it is zero it is parallel to that bed these are explained as well uh, also explained here you can just read them out uh, this is when the, the when the slope is positive uh, the water surface profile increases when there is some uh, uh, kind of blockage obviously it will increases when there is a fall we have a negative slope and when we have uh, you can say that d by d by uh, d by dl uh, is zero then we have the, the parallel slope and this is when uh, adverse slope for not possible for this for our scenario so we have discussed up till now that uh, the channel bottom slope changes from uh, mild to the adverse slope 
and uh, here we will uh, just focus on the uh, mild slope and uh, I will discuss in detail about the mild slope and then you will have a better concept about the all the different slopes that how uh, different water surface profiles are developed in the bottom slopes in different types of bottom slopes for example uh, for the mild slope uh, you must remember that for the mild slope the the the, the normal bottom slope or the uniform uh, uh, the normal uh, flow depth or the uniform flow depth why not uh, should be greater than the yc uh, if it is greater than the critical depth flow depth then it would be mild slope and uh, secondly uh, you must remember that for the mild slope the flow would be subcritical and then if we have a mild slope if the bottom slope is mild then there are possibilities there are possibilities that for the mild slope we will get three different types of water surface profiles and here I'll discuss it here just uh, be attentive that uh, in the mild slope we have three different zone this is our zone one this is our zone two this is our zone three basically uh, if we have uh, uh, from the bot uh, channel bottom at that point this is our normal bottom uh, uh, normal flow depth and uh, this is our uh, from the bottom to that point this is our critical flow depth so if there is a kind of obstruction if there is a mild slope and we provide uh, obstruction in front of the flow then the flow depth is if the flow depth increases from the normal flow depth obviously when there is blockage this uh, uh, the blockage will further increase that flow depth so the water surface profile would be increased in such a way so this one is in the zone 1 which is above from the normal flow depth so this water surface profile would be m1 and then what when this kind of water surface profile will be developed when we have a mild slope and there is a fall in a canal let's suppose there is a fall in a canal so then you can you can see that the slope uh, will be uh, decreases so here the y naught in the zone 2 the y naught is greater than y so y naught will be decreases and the slope will be the non uh, the non uniform flow depth the non uniform will be started from here and the flow depth water surface profile will be changes in such a way and then it again move on and for the third scenario for the zone 3 this uh, this would develop in a scenario when we have provided a sluice gate and the water at the upstream uh, 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 develop in such a way the water surface profile and when the water uh, at the from the bottom of that sluice gate uh, moves at the downstream then it moves out in such a way and it makes a water surface profile of in this way this is again when the slope is mild so for the zone 3 if we are if we're talking about this region then that means y naught y naught is greater than in zone 3 y naught is greater than yc and yc is greater than obviously yc is greater than this our non-uniform flow depth so in our next page you can see in our next slide you can see this is an example if you just again check uh, this is our uh, for the for our steep slope and the flow is sub uh, subcritical this is our uh, for zone one this is our uh, flow depth at zone one this is a water surface profile at zone one m1 the m2 at the zone two and m3 at the zone and three so this is an example of zone one when we provide an obstruction a sluice gate in in front of the waterway you can see that the water uh, water uh, the normal flow depth starts increasing from here and then it starts increasing gradually and it reaches to a point here so this water surface profile is above from this flow depth so that is why it is y is greater than y naught because 
the dy by dx is positive or for or you can say the dh by dx the value of the dh by dx the equation which we derived is positive now so its value is increasing this is one scenario so if we discuss about its uh, uh, downstream its downstream is you can see it here its downstream you can see that here is also a gradually varied flow so it's uh, this is basically uh, this is we are talking about the zone 3 uh, so this kind of water surface profile is at the zone 3 and the slope is steep and the flow is subcritical and now again the water is water surface profile will form in this way this is for the zone 3 and for example if we have uh, for the zone 2 when we have a fall the slope is uh, uh, you can say uh, uh, subcritical uh, the flow is subcritical and you can see that the water surface profile will form such type of effects. these uh, three different uh, types of uh, water surface profile will be developed when we have a mild slope and uh, sorry uh, this difference uh, and similarly you can uh, uh, check in your textbook about the steep slope and the critical, horizontal and the adverse. So these are, uh, I, this is another view of these uh, from the mild to the adverse slope. So in the end, you will just uh, go for your elementary hydraulics page number 451. These are your some exercise questions. So here we have an example related to our topic. Uh, I will just uh, solve the first example, and then uh, uh, then the uh, other examples you have to solve by yourself. So in this example, uh, it is saying that uh, draw water surface profile for two reaches of the open channel given in the figure below. Okay, a gate is located between the two reaches. This one is the first reach and this is the second reach. Uh, and the second reach ends with a sudden fall. Okay. So this is our numerical. This is a numerical in which uh, the numerical is plotted uh, in this figure. Uh, so in the first figure, uh, he says that S naught is less than S C and, and, and the, for the second reach he says that S naught is greater than S C. So the bed slope is less than S C and here the bed slope is greater than S C. So we have uh, learned in our pre in this lecture in the previous slide uh, that uh, now we have to basically find the water surface profiles at the upstream and at the downstream. So this would help us out that what kind of bed slope this is. So this means that bed slope S0 is basically one reach, one bed slope S0 1 and S0, S0 2 is a bed slope of reach 2. So S0 that means bed slope is less than the critical slope then that means it is not very sharp slope because it is less than the critical slope. So this is the uh, the scenario when we have a mild slope for the mild slope s naught is less than the sc so for the mild slope we know that the flow would be uh, subcritical and the other uh, condition is that the normal flow depth or the uniform flow depth will be greater than the critical flow depth so here would be the critical flow depth and here for example would be the natural flow depth so uh, so the the water surface profile because it's an abstraction water surface profile would be in this form so this is m1 so because it's mild slope so the, this here the the slope would be m1 and at the downstream you know there is uh, water uh, at the downstream will move in this way because the slope is steep then the slope, slope is steep sleep, uh, steep sorry so again we have three zones zone one zone two zone three so for the steep slope we know that 
the flow would be supercritical and other other condition is that uh, the critical flow depth will be uh, greater than the uh, normal flow depth uh, so we have uh, this uh, this is the figure we, we they provided us uh, in which this is our mild slope and at reach 2 we have a steep slope these are the three different zones zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 obviously for zone 1 we have uh, for mild slope we have uh, y and uh, normal flow depth is greater than the yc and because of this obstruction we have a uh, water surface profile of this form and we call it m1 and at the steep slope we have a supercritical flow and for supercritical flow is that the critical flow depth is greater than the yc and our 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 water our water surface profile will be in zone 3 and in zone 3 the condition is that the critical depth is critical flow depth is greater than the uh, normal flow depth and normal flow depth will be greater than the non uniform flow depth so this would be the non uniform flow depth and uh, this is our gradual varied flow from this point to this point this is our mild slope m1 and this one is because the slope is steep so we have their s3 and the important point is that why the hydraulic jump not formed at the downstream because the, at the upstream we have subcritical flow and at the downstream we have supercritical flow so if we have a supercritical flow at the upstream we might have formed a hydraulic jump at this point and then for sure we have a big hydraulic jump at the downstream then we have a steep slope at the upstream steep slope means supercritical flow at the upstream and subcritical flow at the downstream so when the flow from super to sub then there is hydraulic jump the formation of hydraulic jump is for sure so that's it from this lecture i hope you like it and uh, these are the other example which you have uh, to go through and uh, uh, i hope in, in within the next few days i will upload more relevant videos related to this course therefore subscribe this channel so that you may get auto notification of my next video till then take care bye bye